Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Marvel Champions video. A few days ago, Fantasy Flight released some more cards for the Wasp set. So I'm going to go through the cards here. I'm going to let you know what I think of them. I'm going to give my thoughts on them. I'm going to discuss them a little bit. So first up, first up, we have Nadia Van Dyne. This is the alter ego side to the Wasp. So hand size is 6 with 11 hit points. Uh, she's a genius and has this girl action. Shuffle up to two cards with a printed mental resource from your discard pile into your deck. Limit once per round. So basically, you can get some of the cards that you want back if they have those uh, mental resources on them. It's also a good way to maybe prevent you from um, running through your entire deck and getting dealt an encounter card by happy, by going through all your cards. So um, that is Nadia Van Dyne. We're going to move into the uh, hero side to the Wasp, and then we're going to look at a quick video on um, how her um, cards fold, just like Ant-Man. It's basically the same concept, but they have a little video up there for that as well. So we'll be right back with that. And we are back with our next card. This is the uh, first hero side of the Wasp. This is her tiny form. So just like Ant-Man, she has both giant and tiny forms. So again, Wasp, one thwart, one attack, two defense. She's, um, this is, she's an Avenger, and she's tiny. And has the small but mighty response. So after Wasp, or the vet you play, defeat the minion or side scheme, deal one damage to the villain. So basically, whenever um, the Wasp gets rid of a, um, a villain or a, a minion or gets rid of a side scheme, the villain's going to be taking additional damage. And then a uh, hand size goes down to uh, 5 in this form. So again, 1 thwart, 1 attack, 2 defense, and then um, after she defeats a uh, minion or a side scheme, either with her um, thwart, thwart attack or an event, you get to do 1 damage to the villain as well. So that is Tiny Wasp. We're going to move into Giant Wasp, and then we're going to move into that video again as, as well. So we'll be right back with that. And here we have Wasp in her giant form. So she's an Avenger and she's giant. So two thwart, two attack, three defense, and both her uh, thwart and attack have an asterisk next to it. So um, with her thwart, so threat you remove using your basic thwart power can be divided among schemes as you choose. Um, and same with damage. So damage uh, you deal using your basic attack power can be divided among um, enemies as you choose. That's kind of huge. So a lot of times, um, let's say you want to get rid of a side scheme, and you only need to get rid of one more threat to get rid of it, but you thwart two and you're kind of wasting that other thwart. You can't use it for anything else really. So she allows you to um, basically choose how you want to spread out your attack and your thwart. So you could get rid of, um, let's say, like two points of threat off of uh, one side scheme or one scheme, or you could divide it between uh, two different schemes. So let's say there's two different schemes that each have one point remaining, you can um, basically uh, thwart and get rid of both of those schemes because she can spread out her um, spread out her spread out her thwart. With attack, it's the same thing. She does two attack. Uh, let's say there's two uh, two um, Ultron drones out. You can basically exhaust her to attack and take out two Ultron dro drones instead of just basically um, doing two damage to one of them, which really doesn't do anything. And it gets rid of the one drone, but then the extra damage is kind of wasted. So that is pretty good as well. Uh, hand size, again, goes down to 5 with this form. Uh, that's going to do it for this version of the Wasp. We're going to move into her um, little video on her foldable cards, and then we're going to move into the other cards that were revealed from her deck. We'll be right back with that. All right, and we are back with our little video of how um, the Wasp will basically fold and unfold. So once the card is unfolded, you basically unfold it, you rotate it, and you have your um, giant... Um, giant Wasp, and on, on the other side of each of those cards is going to be Nadia Van Dyne, and on the other side is going to be Tiny Wasp, and then that gets unfolded to get Giant Wasp. You fold it back up to either flip back to um, the other hero form, hit flip back to Tiny form, or flip back to your Alter Ego form. So that, um, she's going to work in the exact same way that Ant-Man does. Um, I imagine there's going to be cards that say when she changes forms, do this or do that. Ant-Man has a lot of things like his helmet that say when he um, transforms to a different form, you get to do these additional additional effects. I would imagine the Wasp is going to have something similar. So that is that. We're going to move into the rest of the cards from her deck, and we'll be right back with that. And we are back with Giant Help. It's a two-cost event. Um, it's a thwarting event. It generates a mental resource when you discard it. So hero action, thwart. Remove three threat, th three th three threat from a scheme... Remove a total of four instead of divided among schemes as you choose instead if you are in giant hero form. So gets rid of a three threat off a scheme 
But if you're in giant form, it gets rid of one additional threat, and then that um, you can re remove those threat from different schemes. So I'm just like her um, her hero ability on giant form, whenever she attacks or thwarts, she can spread out her attack and her thwart. With this event, then with giant help, it gets rid of um, at, at least it's gonna if you're in tiny form, it's gonna get rid of three threat three off of a single scheme. If you're going into um, if you're doing it in giant form, you're gonna get rid of a total of four. Uh, spread across, um, divided among schemes as you choose. So it could go, like, let's say you're doing four. You could do, if there's four uh, uh, um, schemes in play, you can get rid of a threat off of each. If there's two in play, you can get rid of get rid of two off one, two off the other. Um, really cool card. Uh, basically, two costs to get rid of uh, three, but then if you're in giant form, you get four, and you can spread it around. So that's pretty good. So that's giant help. We're going to move into our next card. And we are back with Pinpoint Strike. It's a three-cost event. Uh, generates a mental resource when you discard it. It's an attack. So hero action attack. Deal seven damage to an enemy. If you are in tiny hero form, this attack does one additional damage to that enemy and gains overkill. So that's pretty good. So basically, um, you could do this attack in giant form, and you still get um, you still get your seven damage. But if you're in tiny form, you get essentially get eight damage, and it gains overkill. Um, overkill can be pretty good. Let's say you want to get rid of, like, let's, let's say just a one-cost minion, or like a one a one health minion, I should say, like an Ultron drone or something like that. You can um, pay for pinpoint strike. You then get to do um, eight damage to the to the drone essentially, and then the other seven damage will carry over to like the villain. So let's say you want to get rid of both that drone and do a bunch of damage to the villain. You can get rid of it. If you're in again, it's tiny form. You're gonna deal um, one damage to that, and then the remaining seven will go over to the villain. So again, playable in giant form as well, but has an additional effect of getting that extra damage and overkill if you're in tiny form. So that is pinpoint strike. We're gonna move into our next card. And next we have swarm tactics. It's a one cost event. Generates a mental resource when you discard it. It's a tactic card. I think we talked about this a little bit when they right when they announced these um, Ant-Man and the Wasp Wasp set. So it's a team up. So Ant-Man and Wasp, max one per deck. Uh, hero, hero action, change to your other hero form. Ready your hero. So basically, you can attack or thwart, uh, do like basically um, get some damage off, get some threat removed, and then pay one resource, and then uh, flip forms, and then um, ready your hero, and then attack or thwart again. So you can be in giant Wasp form. Do an attack, spread some damage around, then pay one, flip the tiny form, and then um, you know remove some more threat or something like that. So that is uh, Swarm Tactics. That's pretty good. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have Thor. This is one of her uh, her allies. It's not specific to her deck, so you can just go in any aggression deck. Uh, four cost uh, generates a uh, um, energy resource when you discard it. Um, one Thwart. Two attack with uh, one incidental damage each. So this is Jane Foster. Uh, comes in with four health. It's um, Asgard and Avenger. And as a response, after you play, th uh, after you pl play Thor uh, from your hand, deal two damage to the villain, or three instead if you pay for this card using a physical resource. So this could go well. It might go well in, a, in like a just like a Captain America like aggression deck because he has the Super Soldier Serum, which is lets basically lets you exhaust it to get a physical resource. So that deck is really good at basically has cards that really need physical resources to like do better, and um, that serum is really good way to make sure that you get that resource when you need it. So that can be used to uh, play Thor, or the uh, Jade Foster version of Thor. And then if you do that, you get to basically she comes in, does three damage, and then can either uh, do one Thor or one Thor with one incidental damage, or two attack with one incidental damage. Obviously, you're probably going to want, want her to be doing attack mostly. So, um, essentially, you could have her come in on... If you pay for it with a physical resource, she can come in and deal 5 damage. So, if it comes in, deals 3, and then if you just attack attack normally, you're doing an additional 2 damage to make it 5. That's pretty good. A lot of... Um, that's going to get rid of quite a few diff a few minions, depending on uh, which kind of minions you're, you're fighting. So, that is uh, Thor. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have Surprise Attack, a one-cost event. Generates a physical resource when you discard it. It's an attack. A hero response, after you change form, deal three damage to an enemy, or four instead if you pay for this card or using a physical resource. So again, another card 
that uh, does, does more if you use that certain resource type. But I do like this, so you basically deal uh, three up to four damage, depending on if you use the physical resource or not. And then you get to uh, you get to change four, which is pretty good. So you can basically um, use this, get some damage off, flip for um, flip your form, um, potentially um, attack again if you haven't um, used your uh, basic attack yet, or basic thwart if you want to do that as well. So that is surprise attack. We're going to move into our next card, and we are back with our final card for this video. This is Lion Weight. It's a one-cost upgrade. Generates an energy resource when you discard it. It's also a preparation. Uh, max one per player. Hero response attack. After a minion engages you, discard Lion Weight to deal three damage to that minion. Um, I really like this card. I think this could go really well in like a Thor um, aggression build. So uh, Thor gets to you know draw cards when minions um, when he gets engaged with minions, and then um, you can use something like again like Defender of the Nine Realms which lets you um, engage a minion, draw cards, and get rid of a uh, threat off of the scheme. So this could be a really good way to basically just like have a minion enter enter play, and depending on how much health it has, if it has uh, three or less health, it's going to engage the player, or engage, like let's, say, like, let's say Thor, engage Thor, and then this will deal three damage to that minion, immediately defeating it, but then Thor still gets the uh, bonuses for engaging the minion, so he'll get to draw cards and all that kind of stuff. Uh, really cool, really cool card. I definitely like like the way it like, kind of combos with Defender of the Nine Realms, so you basically discard cards on the top of your deck, or the encounter deck, until you get to get a minion. The minion engages you. You remove the threat off of the scheme, and then depending on how much health that minion has, it comes in and basically just gets immediately defeated. If it's a minion with a tough status, status it just uh, gets rid of that tough status. I like that it only, only costs one. Um, it can, that, I can definitely see this uh, being used, especially particularly as, with a Thor deck. But I think it's got like a lot of applications like outside of that. So just an aggression deck in general, where basically you can have a minion come in and potentially get defeated right when they enter. So that is Lion Wait. That's our final card for this video. Um, that's going to do for the for this uh, video on the Wasp. I believe, uh, at least at first, um, Ant-Man was announced to be coming out, I think, in November. Some people are saying it's probably going to be, it might be October now, because they are, I think they're still trying to do a deck or a Marvel Champions product once a month. So, of course, um, this month, in September, we had the Rise of Red Skull. Um, just an update on the Rise of Red Skull. I am two levels into the campaign currently. Um, I've beaten uh, both uh, Crossbones and Absorbing Man. I'm using the uh, Stunlock Captain America deck for this. So defeated um, defeated Crossbones fairly easily, but had quite a few of the of the delay encounters on Absorbing Man, and the delay encounters because there there are things carry over from game to game. So um, at the end of the first game, you get to get um, a certain like upgrade card. The one I got, or it's like a it's like a one use kind of thing because you record it in your campaign log, and I I took the laser cannon, which is I think it deals five damage to like each minion and the villain as well. So if you really need to get the board cleared off, it's a good way to do that. But then once you use it, it's kind of you write it out of the campaign log. You kind of cross it out, and it's like a one. You get it. You get to use it for in one game, and that's it. Um, Absorbing Man has these delay encounters, and those delay encounters come into play. Um, I think a few scenarios p past him, because after um, Absorbing Man, I'm, I'll I'll be doing Taskmaster next. It goes Taskmaster, Zola, and then Red Skull. And um, when you play Red Skull, a certain um, I haven't looked at the actual uh, scheme yet, but a certain scheme will enter play with a certain number of threat counters on it equal to the number of delay counters that you um, obtained while you're fighting Absorbing Man. Because Absorbing Man is basically there to kind of um, delay the Avengers from doing anything. He's kind of there as like a diversion, basically. But uh, again, two levels into the campaign... Um, I've taken the card again. I took the laser cannon again. It does five damage to the villain. I think it also five damage to the, each uh, minion. That's engaged with. I think it just engaged with you. I'm doing it solo, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then the other upgrade I took after the absorbing bag game gives me uh, plus two hit points and plus one one to thwart as well. So now Captain America's thwart is so basically he's a three two two at the moment. So uh, three th uh, three four thwart two attack two defense. There's a bunch of other cards you can actually choose from. Like there's some that will give you additional attack, some will give you additional defense, some will give you a couple more hit points. 
So right now, yeah, I took the one of uh, plus two hit points. So Captain America starts each game, as long as I have that card, with uh, 13 hit points instead of 11. Um, I'll keep you guys informed with um, how the campaign goes. Again, I have three levels still to go. So we still have Taskmaster Zola and Red Skull to go through. And then I still have not tested out uh, Hawkeye or Spider Woman yet. Been kind of busy with work. But um, after that, uh, after I'm going to probably play at least just kind of so, like the standard Spider Woman deck and the standard Hawkeye deck. And I can let you know what I think of them. I'll probably do a separate video for those. But that's going to do it for this, uh, this Wasp video. I want to thank you again for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks again and take care.